Greetings viewers. By way of a brief explanation for this video, I can tell you that I bought these two air rifles in 2019 and at the time I devised this quick and dirty method of comparing them. Because the weather was fairly cool, the CO2 gun compared unfavourably with the Springer. So I had the idea of repeating the test during this heat wave we are currently having to see if the performance gap had narrowed. I'll be shooting 10 exact hammer pellets from each gun over 15 metres into a standard paper target. While I do so, my phone, running the audio app called Wave Editor, will record the sounds made. Afterwards, the recording will be evaluated to determine the average pellet velocity achieved by both guns. So as we look at the equipment here on the table that I'm going to use, I'll run you through it. Firstly, the CO2 powered Umarex RP5 carbine in .22 calibre, and the second gun, the Swiss Arms TG1 brake barrel Springer, also in 22 calibre. The recording of the target shooting could be done using many apps, but I use this one called Wave Editor. If you want to give it a try, just go to the Google Play Store and download it for free, like I'm doing here on the screen. Search for Wave Editor and select this icon. It'll work on your phone and tablet. Once you're set up, go to a location that's halfway between the gun and the target. Start the app, Wave Editor, go into the record using the centre button at the bottom. Place the phone on the floor and start recording. The phone will then record the report of the gun and the impact of the pellet on the target and by uh, examining the waveform you'll be able to tell accurately the time interval between the two events. So here I am firing the first of the 10 shots with the Umarex RP5. The RP5 doesn't have a big following mainly because it's both underpowered and inaccurate having only a relatively short, unrifled but choked barrel. However, it is a lot of fun to shoot because of the pump action and the five shot magazine. Notice the distinctive double blip of the audio, audio recording for every shot. On the other side of the ring, the Swiss Army TG1 is a fairly conventional budget spring powered rifle. It's up to the UK limit and as accurate as anything else in the right hands. When all of the shots have been fired, stop the recording. You might want to record a message such as the type of gun, the range and the type of pellet used, just to uh, put that information inside the file where you'll never lose it. You'll always know what the data is about and stop the recording, name it and then press keep to store the file. When you've finished making the recording, you go back to the menu using the back button on your phone, pick one of the uh, recordings and then you can simply choose to expand the the time axis at the bottom and zoom in on the waveform of what is on the left the report from the gun and on the right the impact of the pellet on the target by using the pen or editing button at the top you can bring a cursor into play 
by sliding it along the scale at the time scale at the top of the, the graph and when you've aligned it with the report of the gun you can simply make a note of the time at the bottom that tells you the time that the cursor once you've made a note of that move the cursor along to the waveform produced by the impact of the pellet on the target and once more make a note of the time difference. When you've got those two times you'll be able to subtract the two to find the time interval and knowing the distance from the gun to the target you'll be able to work out the average pellet velocity over the distance between the gun and the target. You may wish to go further and individually investigate all of the, the waveforms Using uh, one of the other files, one of the other recordings. And watching how the velocity of the pallet changes according to the uh, gas in the gun, uh, the temperature, or the type of pallet used. All these factors will produce a variation in the pallet velocity. Once you have your time interval measurements, you can calculate the average pellet velocities and energy. This first table shows the results of this test. The top three lines are three shots from the RP5, and the bottom three lines are from the TG1. As you can see, the spring-powered TG1 is still considerably more powerful than the CO2-powered RP5. The first column of the table is the time of the sound from the report, and the second column is the time for the target impact. Subtracting the two, we get the interval in the third column. Dividing the distance in column 4 by the time interval gives us the pellet velocity in column 5. The energy values depend on the weight of the pellet you're shooting, so I won't go into that. This second table shows the approximate intervals for the normal range of velocities and powers for UK air rifles. You can use this as a guide if, you're, if your mental arithmetic is a bit rusty. Bear in mind the powers and percentages given in the last three columns are entirely dependent on the pellet weight, which in this example is 15 grains. And I'm taking the rifle UK limit of 12 foot-pounds, rather than the 6 foot-pound limit given for pistols. While you watch me topple cans in slow motion, I'll emphasise a few points. Firstly, this method that you've seen measures the average pellet velocity between the rifle and the target. The shorter this distance, the closer you will get to the true muzzle velocity of the rifle. In all probability, the accuracy of the measurement will drop if you do this. Even so, studying the pellet velocities drop off as the range increases could be another interesting subject. If you want to use this method to p compare guns and ammunition, or maybe mods to those guns, uh, or the progress of tuning, you may be interested to hear that I'm planning a simple app to streamline the calculations. Although once you have had a little practice it becomes easier. After all, perfecting the process is all part of the fun. It may be quite time consuming, but it's certainly cheaper than the alternative. Lastly, you may have realised the reason for placing the sound recorder halfway between the rifle and the target. This removes the need to allow for the delay in the sound travelling from the source to the recorder, as this will be the same in both cases. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope it gave you some ideas. Finally, for your amusement, here I am, fumbling the loading of the gun. A lot of good I'd be on the front line. Bye for now.